Oh man, I got to change this intro, the rideshare gig ain't worth a shit. So you got your T-Mobile 5G home internet box and you're all hooked up. You may have included in your hookups a separate router. In that case, the IPs of all your local devices most likely, likely reflect the configuration setups in the attached router. Or you didn't hook up another router, but just decided to use the T-Mobile box built-in router. In that case, the IPs of your local devices will reflect the DHCP server in the T-Mobile box, which will be 192.168.12.xxx. You've run some speed tests and you are satisfied with your internet speeds, your ethernet speeds if used, and your Wi-Fi speeds. But maybe you are an advanced user and before you signed up to T-Mobile, you ran a security camera server or a media server like Plex or some other web server on one or two of your local computers. Now you are having problems accessing these servers outside your local network on the internet. Before T-Mobile, you had set up port forwarding or DMZ IPs on your old router and that doesn't work anymore. Why? The simple answer is that the T-Mobile box won't let you do port forwarding. Doesn't matter if you still have your old router set up that way. The trash can box or the Arcadian has a strict firewall and just won't let you. Don't ask me the technical reasons or the technical why. I don't know. What I do know is that I found a workaround that I like and it utilizes a reverse proxy server in conjunction with tunnels which will allow you to access your servers securely. I made an original video on this topic using the Windows machine to set this up, but this video will demonstrate how to do it on a Raspberry Pi Zero wireless attached to your Wi-Fi network. Now you can utilize any Linux-based computer to do this, but I just happen to have an old Raspberry Pi sitting around that I bought a couple of years ago for nine bucks. Nowadays, due to the chip shortage, you would get scalp trying to buy any Raspberry Pi. As I said, you can use any Linux-based computer, Raspberry Pis, or a full-fledged Linux desktop. The only requirement is that the computer has to be connected to your local network, either via Ethernet or on the Wi-Fi network. The little Raspberry Pi Zero with wireless is ideal because it's unobtrusive, takes very little power, and once set up just works forever. Because this tutorial focuses on the Linux setup, I have to presume you have some basic knowledge of the Linux file and directory structure, how to move around it, and other basic stuff like creating files. On the Raspberry Pi Zero Wi-Fi, you can set up the operating system without even connecting a keyboard, mouse, or monitor. In the description is a link to a current tutorial on how to do that headless install. And this video also assumes you know how to connect to your Linux computer via SSH using a client like Putty. Let's begin. In my case, I first install an operating system on my Raspberry Pi Zero using a headless setup. I'll speed through the video because remember, in the description is a link on how to do this. Then I found its IP address by using a program called Advanced IP Scanner. I then logged into the Pi using the SSH client Putty. Now we are ready to install the local exposed service, or as some might call it, a resident program. Before doing that though, let's set up our local exposed.io tunneling domains. My first video detailed how to set up a trial or test of local exposed.io using a Windows computer. The trial version is very limited, so this video assumes that you took the plunge and bought a subscription for $6 a month or $60 a year, hopefully using my affiliate link. Create an account, sign in, and go to your dashboard. Once you are, you are in your dashboard, enter the Domains folder. Now I've blurred out my domains because I don't want a bunch of traffic trying to get through, but we will create two new domains to show you how it's done. Click the Add button and make up a domain name with the default extension localx.io. You can use a custom domain, but you have to register it and go through a couple of other hoops. So we are just going to keep this simple. The first domain we will create will be mycameras.localx.io. Eventually, this will be directed to my IP security camera server running on my bedroom computer. The second domain we create will be mywebserver.localx.io. This will be directed by the service on the Raspberry Pi Zero to my main Windows computer, which is running an Apache web server. After we've created the domains, go to the access panel 
and you'll find your security token. You'll need this to sign in your service to the local exposed server in the cloud. Copy this and save it somewhere for quick access. I just pasted it into Notepad. Now that was the easy part. Now we'll go back to installing the service on the Raspberry Pi or other computer of your choice. We are back in the command window having SSH into the Raspberry Pi Zero using the client PuTTY. If we go to the document section on the Local X website, they have a section on how to install the service on a Raspberry Pi. We will use these instructions exactly with just a minor change in one of the files to reflect our reserved domain and our local network web servers. First step, SSH into your computer, which I've already done. Second, download the program from the cloud using the WGET program built into the Pi operating system. Just copy and paste the command. Since it is downloaded as a zip file, unzip it in the home directory. Copy and paste the unzip command. If you do a directory listen, you'll see you have both the zip file and now the script file needed to run the service. We now need to make a unit text file which will tell the computer, the Raspberry Pi, how to run this service and ensure it's started up on boot. This uses the Nano Text Editor, integral to most Linux systems. Copy the Nano Create Text Local X Service command and paste it. The file is created, but now we have to copy the contents of their example and paste it into the editor. This is where we have to make a couple of changes. Change the reserve domain from the example to the reserve domain we created, which was mywebserver.localx.io. We also have to tell the program where to route the web request. In my case, the two is the Apache web server I have running on my main Windows computer. Use the local IP address of the computer and the port the server is running on. In my case, it's 192.168.1.10 colon 85, which is the port. Save the file with the control X and the yes confirmation. This file now has to be copied to the proper directory to run on boot. Copy and paste that command. Next step is to reload the systemd manager. Copy this command and run it. We have to let the local exposed server on the cloud know who we are, so run this command to sign in. You also need to copy and paste the access token you stored somewhere when it asks you for it. Hopefully, it'll give you the successfully signed in comment. Almost done. Enable the service to run on boot by copying and pasting this next statement. Lastly, start the service by giving it this command. Now you could check to see if it's running now, but I prefer to reboot the Raspberry Pi and see if it runs after a reboot. So let's do that. Okay, we're up and running again. Now check your tunnels page or my tunnels page on your dashboard at the local exposed website and you should see that the tunnel is running. As a final check, call the URL in your browser and see if it takes you to your web server. Boom, it works. And it'll work from any web browser on the internet. Fine and dandy, but we created two server domain names on the local exposed cloud. How do we get the second one running? That's next in this, re in this tutorial. To run two or more tunnels using the localexposed.com service, it's advisable to create a configuration file, which the local program runs on boot and when you restart the local service on your Linux or other system. 
Let's do that on my Raspberry Pi Zero, which this tutorial has been using. Make sure you're in the home directory where we downloaded the local X program and created the unit file. Create a new file called config YAML, that's Y-A-M-L, using the nanotext editor in Linux. Now the documentation shows you you can do this with a local X command, but it populates that file with a bunch of stuff that we really don't need for this simple tu tutorial. So let's just start from scratch. Define the first root. Call it anything you like, but to keep things in perspective, let's call it the same as our first tunnel, which was my web server. <clears throat> Next, make sure you ident the commands underneath the function, because formatting here is strict. Define the type, which in our case will be HTTP for all of our tunnels. Next, declare the region. Now declare the reserved dom domain we created, and again, in our case, it's the mywebserver.localx.io. Finally, define the routing that this request will be directed. And for my web server domain, it's routed to the computer I'm running the web server on, which is 192.168.1.10.85, which is the, the uh, port. Okay, while we're in this file, let's create the second routing. Again, label it the same as our second domain name called My Cameras. <clears throat> the type and region will be the same. Declare the second reserved domain we created, and again, in our case, it was mycameras.localx.io. The two will be different, in our case, is the computer that is running my Blue Iris IP camera web server, which is 192.168.1.164 colon 81. The port is 81. Save the file and exit the nanotext editor. Now we have to modify the unit file we created when we set up only the My Web Server domain. Use the nanotext editor and open the local expose service file. We must change the exec start line to reflect the configuration file instead of the reserve domain. So delete everything after the word tunnel and type in config, then space, then a double dash, and then the path to our config file, which is home.pi/config.yaml. This tells the computer to use a configuration file and where that file is on the computer. Save the file and exit the nano editor. Now remember, this unit file must be copied to the system directory that Linux uses for automatically booting services. So do that with the Linux copy command, which is copy local exposed out service to the uh, etc slash system d slash system directory. Now we should be good to go since we already configured the other requirements in our single domain previously. Just reboot the computer and see how it goes. Okay, we've uh, rebooted. And so now let's call up our web browser and see if this whole thing works. First, we'll put in the URL of our my web server. Put that in and bingo, it works. Now let's try the other one, the other uh, URL that we created, mycameras.localx.io. Put that in and bingo, it looks like it works. I have to sign in to it uh, personally and I can see my cameras. Now, these uh, URLs aren't going to be here uh, if you try it because I don't want all that web tra traffic trying to access my servers because it would probably crash it. But uh, these are examples. This whole tutorial works on a Raspberry Pi, or Raspberry Pi as I keep miscalling it, uh, computers. If you're running a different uh, Linux-based computer, then it may not work exactly like that. The directories might be different. Uh, etc. If you're trying to run, run it on Ubuntu or something, then I'm not exactly sure if it's going to work exactly like 
this, but with modifications it should work. Also, you can run this on a Windows computer. And uh, if you watch my first video, it's a pretty easy setup. You just have to uh, create an auto exec batch file so that it runs, runs the service on boot. So all I have to say is have fun experimenting. I did. And at my age, it's better than sitting around watching uh, reruns of the uh, Phoenix Suns uh, disaster last season. So I'll see you in the next video. Wait, a couple things I forgot to mention is uh, you don't have to do this or subscribe to this service just because you have T-Mobile as your provider. This works with any internet provider, cable or DSL or whatever. I just used it because the T-Mobile doesn't allow port forwarding, but uh, if you don't want to do port forwarding on other providers, then you can use this service. Uh, second, I remind you, if you're going to sign up for this service, then use my affiliate link, uh, which is posted in the remarks. Uh, my uh, ride-sharing gig is uh, not very profitable these days because of gas prices and everything, so I'd appreciate it. Thank you.